Um, you mentioned too earlier that you became involved in organizing for La Raza Unida. Mm -hmm. And can you talk uh, to us about that? Sure. Uh, uh, La Raza Unida party, and I, and I, and I, and I, I guess people can may have different recollections, but La Raza Unida party, the way that I was attracted to to the third party, was that we we felt some of us felt that that for for Chicanos the Democratic Party at the time uh, offered nothing for us uh, but extracted power voting but offered nothing in return and the idea was are there places uh, in the state where we can run third party candidates uh, and basically affect the the party get the party to pay attention to us. Keep in mind that at the time, still, no one is thinking that Rasunida is going to win. I mean, we're basically saying we want to be able to, we want to be able to be listened to. And in politics, if you have if you have votes, any number of votes, people are going to listen to you. So the idea was, in my mind, was well, if we can if we can have a Rasunida parties, uh, then we will get people to to start listening. We organized Raza Unida Party here in Hidalgo County, Raza Unida Party, in other words, an independent party here in Hidalgo mm -hmm. County. I think in, in, in Zavala County, I think they had their own other Raza Unida Party as well over there. I don't know whether that was before or after, but más o menos around the same. The same the what same year thing. was this? Well, I think Alex ran, I think Alex ran in, gosh, I want to say 70 or 70, 71. Alex ran in 70 or 72, Alex Moreno, mm -hmm. and he ran as a Raza Unida candidate. So, because he had already lost as a Raza Unida candidate when, when we won here in San Juan in 71. Okay. And what was he going for? County Commissioner. County commissioner. Yeah. And, and uh, he lost, but he won, he won in the precincts North Alamo and North San Juan here. Right in our in our precincts, he he won. But but that was from from where I stood. That that's what Raza Unida was was uh, would 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 help us. Then we then people started talking about a statewide Raza Unida party, and we had a convention in San Antonio, and it was it was uh, I don't remember what the who the players were, the, the, either either for or against. But there was a lot of people who wanted a state party. So, uh, some of us were concerned that. That that was ridiculous, that that having a state in terms of resources and because we knew what it was to raise petitions, and it was it was hard, you know, for a county, más o menos when statewide petitions were, you know, who and who was going to get the petitions, right? And we we only had part of the parties in Zavala and and, and Hidalgo counties, and so but I think there was a concession in San Antonio, and 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 I felt that well. If people really want a state party and we'll get a state party, then that means that anybody can run anywhere in Texas. So you don't have to have a, a statewide candidate, but then you can run in, in, in Zavala or El Paso or Houston mm -hmm. or wherever, right? And so we, I, I, we came back from San Antonio feeling that that, that that made sense, but then we were told, well, but you actually have to have a, a gubernatorial candidate because if you don't, then you can't exist, and you got to get a certain percentage of the vote. Otherwise, <laughs> so then now we had to have a candidate. I didn't realize that. So, so someone calls a meeting for San Antonio, and we were up there one. I think it was one late one morning or late one evening. I don't remember. It was dark, and there was no place to sit. It was kind of one of those things. It was like the deadline. <laughs> it was the deadline was the following day, and we had no candidate for governor. Right. This is how organized we were. <laughs> and so we go to, we drive to San Antonio, and I think we got there like at four or five in the morning, straight to a meeting. And we're all standing around at this like old gas station in San Antonio. And uh, Jose Angel is there, Mario, Mario Compianes, you know Mario Compianes? Mm -hmm. Mario Compianes is there. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm going, God, it's so bad. In my mind, I'm thinking, God, this is embarrassing. You know, here we are, we don't have a candidate. And I think Jose Angel said, well, here's my, here's my application. He says, I got to go. Here's my application. You guys can't find anybody to run. Well, I'll run. And we're like, wow, what an attitude. 
<laughs> right? And I, and I didn't want Jose Angel because Jose Angel was Jose Angel was was a, had had attracted all the negative attention. Yeah, he said some things and stuff. So he had attracted a lot of negative attention. And and Mario Compian was I said, oh Mario Compian, God, Mario can't even speak, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like wow, and I'm going, jeez. <clears throat> and I was very frustrated because I was, I mean, we were doing things here. I thought were so important with Razonida. And then there's this fellow standing up there with a tie, go tie, a white shirt, go tie. And who's that Gavacho? And they introduced him to us, Ramsey Muniz. And uh, charming guy, I mean, charming, good looking guy. And he, he said that he wanted to run. I said, well, who, who is he? And someone said, well, he's, a, he's only 30, he's gotta be 31 to run. Someone said, no, not, not to run, to, to, to take office. I said, he's not gonna win, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he's not gonna win. Well, then and everybody leaves, right? And it was one of those things. It's just like that. We left. We didn't know who the candidate was. 